everybody. Ty Metalhead, weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this morning. So a lot to talk about in regards to severe weather. We have the enhanced risk today. And then if we go back, actually, we see that we have at least slight risk or above even heading into the Memorial Day weekend. So very active stretch continues. We're going to go over the basics of all four days and we probably will be streaming today. Start out with the enhanced risk like we were at before. And the main threat today is actually damaging winds. So unfortunately, over a very familiar area, we've seen a lot of severe weather over Nebraska, and it looks like we're going to be seeing more of that today. So areas like Grand Island, Omaha, Lincoln, you guys are under the gun once again. Do have a slight risk that includes areas like Wichita, Topeka. And then we also have Woodward, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, and that slight risk as well. Dallas is in there as well as Waco and Abilene here. Stalled out system is causing a little bit of trouble here. Do have a 5% tornado threat towards central Nebraska and east parts of eastern Nebraska, central Kansas, a little bit more towards western Oklahoma, just to the east of the panhandle and over towards Wichita Falls. In between Abilene, there's a 5% area. 2% area goes all the way up to actually North Dakota from the looks of it too. We do have areas off to the east that could have a marginal chance of a tornado. Do have to watch these 2% areas too because we've seen quite a few days where these have overperformed. We also have a very large hatch risk area for hail here today as well. So going to be on the lookout for all three hazards for today. Then there's tomorrow, which has been upgraded to a slight risk. It's been at marginal for a while here. But the main threat for tomorrow looks like damaging winds and hail. There is a very broad 2% tornado threat area. There is a small chance that this could get upgraded to a 5. We'll have to see how the models trend throughout the day and through the morning tomorrow. Day three, we have a enhanced risk that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Hatch risk to go along with that. Unclear at the moment as to what the hazard type will be. But from what I've been seeing over the last few days of the trends, it does look like all three hazards are possible here. I had to get some water there. It sounded a little rough. But in any case, day three looks like it's going to be a pretty big day. And then on day four, we have another enhanced risk to go with that. Predictability too low from those points beyond at the moment so we're mainly just going to put emphasis on those four days we'll do we may see what's what lies ahead beyond that point but we're going to put extra attention on the first four to five days here we have the gfs up of course as we always do and we're just going to kind of run through things here throughout the course of the day here here is our trough that's going to be causing our severe weather today do notice that we probably have a jet streak associated with this here. See a lot of initiation towards uh, South Dakota as we get later into the evening. A couple other points of interest over here, some short waves even at 500 millibars that we can see. Even include, of course, like I said, right towards that Red River region in Oklahoma, just north of Wichita Falls. We have one just around Wichita itself in Kansas. And then we have this short wave here, which I think is going to be the catalyst for our storms as we go towards Nebraska. And then, of course, if we head into the following day, it does look like our trough ramps up just a little bit here. We do have a short wave that pops up over here towards central Texas, just to the south of Dallas, it looks like. So I'm interested in this area, of course. Then for the following day on Saturday, see another really well amped up trough here. So I think this could be a much more broad, severe weather event. Maybe one of the larger ones of the weekend. And then, of course, there's Sunday. Have another trough to go along with that. So we could actually see a couple of different areas. Monday could also be pretty active as well. We'll be off Monday, too, from the looks of it. So I do think that might have a shot at covering it if it is necessary. But it does look like we are still very much in the chokehold of a very active severe weather pattern. Monday actually kind of looks like we're going to be looking towards Illinois and the Ohio Valley once again. So we'll have to see how things pan out with that. <clears throat> and then, of course, as we go forward, still seeing more troughs. A couple that interest me right around the end of the month. We talked about that a while back, but just kind of refreshing ourselves once again. And so we continue to go forward here. Troughs continue to amp up as we get into June. And this is actually a really impressive look here. We'll have to see if this trend holds out and if the timing pans out correctly, that could be a big severe weather event. This would be right towards the 6th heading into the 7th. But like I said, pretty far out at this point. We went the whole 16 days, so 
kind of hard to really uh, put a lot of faith in that right now. Might have a discussion about that sometime this weekend if things continue to trend as they are right now. Looking at the 700 region, the 700 millibar region, see evidence of our short waves this afternoon. It looks like it will be right after sunset where things really start to peak here. It's pretty tip. That's a pretty typical severe season here. We could get an early initiation time towards mid afternoon. Of course, this is pretty typical as well. As we go into the following day, the Friday setup, there's our short waves once again. It does look like the trend kind of shows a later event occurring with this. We'll have to see how that pans out or not or whether that pans out or not, but it does look like Central Texas again, Oklahoma once more, and then over maybe towards the Great Lakes, we could have some action here. But I think really it's gonna be further to the, towards the South where we have the most activity here. I think that's why we're keeping Friday at a slight risk. It wouldn't surprise me if they even push it back towards marginal risk, depending on how models trend. Saturday, of course, being the bigger day, does look like we have very impressive short waves to start out early in the day. We get our initiation early and things really start to ramp up after that point. And then as we get into Sunday here, there again, right around the Ohio Valley, just towards the south here. Southeast, it looks like we get some pretty good action there. This does look like it kind of trends into an early afternoon event from the looks of it. It does look like this will clear out pretty quickly. But this is going to be moving pretty rapid. This is also going to be moving pretty rapidly. And then, of course, here's Monday that I'm kind of interested in as well. It looks like also an early afternoon event to go along with it. So it might be a lot of streaming going on this weekend here on this end. No work to inhibit that either, so uh, stay tuned for that. So last thing we'll go ahead and do before we start getting into the thermos, we're going to look at that low-level jet. We're going to mainly be on watch for that north to south flow. Do see a little bit of that today. Like I said, the chance of tornado is not zero for sure, mm -hmm. especially when you see this kind of flow coming in, especially pushing in this direction. If it was pushing even for just a tiny bit off to the west here even, you get that southeast to northwest flow, I would be even more leery of it. But I really think damaging winds are going to be the main threat. Could see a brief tornado, though. I wouldn't rule it out. But as far as Friday is concerned, Friday, Friday is not super favorable. The flow is there, but the energy itself in the low level jet just isn't there. It's going to pop up mainly after sunset from the looks of it. If it does pan out, though, there is always that chance. But I really think that kind of leans into a damaging wind and hail threat. Also think the storms are going to be mostly elevated during that time frame where the low level jet picks up. So now that we're looking now we're done looking at the kinematics here, we're going to look at the thermos. Now, is it really a surprise that we're going to have an impressive amount of moisture in the short term here? Not really. I mean, we've this has been the story all year, and there's nothing that's really come along to change that. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It will make your weekend barbecue a little bit more muggy a little bit more the uh, uh, dew points are going to be pretty saturated especially further off to the east you go a little bit off to the west here the dew points will be fine but it is going to be hot too we'll look at the temperatures just a second as well but of course as we continue to go forward here like i said nothing really stopping that gulf of mexico moisture from pushing deep into the central eastern u.s here so we're going to be dealing with this well into june from the looks of it Here's some temperatures to go along with it. Like I said, it's going to be hot even over here towards the west for the most part, especially towards the southwest. Dew points aren't going to be a problem for you guys. It's just going to be anywhere east of the Rockies, especially east of the Mississippi in regards to this weekend. So regardless of whether you have severe weather or not, just be prepared for some very uncomfortable, some very uncomfortable temperatures and dew points here going to be kind of stagnant outside if you will <clears throat> and like i said this trend is going to continue throughout the rest of the month and into june like i said we kind of we're kind of just in a pattern that's really ideal for severe weather 
At, if you were to look at some of the long range stuff, you can see the troughing that's going on off to the west. Eventually what's west moves off to the east. And if you do the math, there you go. I mean, that's not rocket science there. <clears throat> so if you see this trough, eventually that trough's gonna move off to the east. It never stalls, it's always active. But yeah, you can see it's gonna be hot. It is going to be hot. We're, as we draw closer towards summer, it's going to look more and more like summer. Lame line, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and take one last look at what our precip could look like. And then we're going to head on out of here and get ready for work on my end. Here's our severe setup for today. You can see storms firing right around sunset. It looks like I do anticipate maybe there's an earlier initiation time than this, especially if you go back to last for now, there's very little. I do think that it's going to start right between mid afternoon and into the evening here. So I would say, I would say somewhere between, let's say four and six is when I would expect storms to start firing off. They're going to take off pretty quick after that. See these move out and then we get into Friday here. Like I said, storm activity looks pretty limited for the most part. Even the models are kind of struggling to pick up on this. It does look like we do get some initiation towards sunset once again. We'll have to see how things pan out with that. I do think, like I said, storms are elevated. Cap might be involved as well with that. And then also as we get towards Saturday evening, that's when we start to see a little bit more widespread severe weather, especially towards that enhancerous region. So we'll be watching that and seeing how that pans out. And then of course, Sunday, we'll be watching towards the, the um, Ohio Valley in the Southeast here. Watch that move out. And then our next storm system comes in right behind that on Monday. So pretty busy Memorial Day weekend in regards to the weather. Then after that, of course, as we all know, storm systems are gonna be rampant and abundant. So, you can see how much I'm moving. The, you can he probably hear how much I'm tapping the keyboard here to go slide by slide here. Just so you can see everything, but I mean, we pretty much already know the story here. A lot of rain, a lot of severe weather to come here. So just stay tuned. Make sure that you are hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and also hitting that share button. We're almost to 900. We're at 850 right now. Love to get there before the... I'd love to get there before the peak of hurricane season. Speaking of which, hurricane season starts June 1st. Stay tuned for those videos as well. Till then, you guys have a great rest of your day. Tire Metal Weatherman signing out.